this is a painful day, coming back to a place that I love and respect so much, albeit virtually, um, but in these circumstances. Obviously, COVID was going to have its impact, but at no stage um, in those conversations was, was I aware in any way of any concern um, that, you know, Greensill would be in any serious financial difficulty. This might be a tougher year than the one before. Uh, no one could quite tell what was around the corner, but there was no, certainly no sense of jeopardy. I was paid an annual amount, a generous annual amount, far more than what I earned as Prime Minister. And I had uh, shares, not share options, but shares in the business, which vested over the period of time of my uh, contract. Um, and so I think it's important for the committee to know that I, you know, was absolutely had a big economic investment in the future of Greensill. I wanted the business to succeed. I wanted it to grow. The fact that I had this economic interest and a serious economic interest, that's important. But I don't think the amount is particularly germane to answering those questions. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a private matter. Do you view the £60 million figure as just totally absurd? Or yeah, it's, it's a completely absurd figure. But I can tell you, the motivation for contacting the government was that I thought we had a really good idea for how to help, uh, how to help extending credit to thousands of businesses. Many people would conclude that at the time of your lobbying, your opportunity to make a large amount of money was under threat. I spent most of my adult life in public service. I believe in it deeply. I would never put forward something that I didn't think was absolutely in the interests of the public good. I did not believe in March or April, uh, when I was doing this contact, that there was a risk of Greensill falling over.